In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this neon statue using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys, Drew here back with another video and as you can see, this is the final output. So first we will create a basic setup, then we will apply color and glow to it. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how you can change colors so you can create as many combinations as you want. Now, before we start, we need to create a pattern, this square pattern that we see in the background. It's super easy to create. Just go to file and create a new document. And here, make sure your size is 100 by 100 on 72 resolution and then create it. Now, it's a bit small, so you can zoom in. And then <coughs> we need to delete the background. So I'm going to select this marquee tool, the square one, start my selection outside and drag it all the way here. So everything is selected. Then simply hit my delete key. And if this comes up, hit cancel. And uh, that means you need to unlock the background. So double click here and unlock it, hit okay. Now when you press delete key, it should work, nice. Now don't remove your selection, we actually need it. So this selection, you right click and then you select a stroke. To make sure you have this option, so make sure that your selection tool is still active. So right click here and then select a stroke. In the stroke, I'm gonna go by five pixels and my color, I'm gonna keep it white and then and make sure location is center and hit okay, okay. So you should have a kind of a stroke as you can see here. Then go to select, deselect. Now we can define it as a pattern. So go to your edit and there you should have a defined pattern option selected and name it whatever you want. So let's name it and then hit okay. Now we don't need this document, we can simply just close it. So close, don't save it. Now let's start the process. So I'm gonna go to file and open the photo. So this is the statue we will work with. Download link for all the images is in description. So let's quickly remove the background. I'm gonna use object selection for it. Uh, so I'm gonna select it, select subject, and it should make a selection. If you don't know how to remove backgrounds, I have tutorial on it so you can check it out. Uh, and then once your selection is ready, just apply a layer mask. And now let's add a background. So I'm gonna create a, a new solid and I'm gonna make it black, hit okay. And this will go under the model obviously so that we can see everything. And I'm gonna take this model and I'm gonna put it in the center like this. And I'm gonna use my crop tool to extend the canvas a little bit because I need more space. Looks pretty good. Now let's create the circular ring in the background. So that will go under the model, right? So create a new layer and make sure it is under your model. Then here select your marquee tool and draw a circle. But when you draw it, hold your shift key and it will stay a perfect circle. So this size looks okay to me. So I'm gonna draw it like this. Then right click and again, we will use a stroke. And here I'm gonna keep it 40 pixels center with white color and hit okay. Remove the selection. So you can also use control D to remove your selection. Now let's add the pattern that we created in the background. So for that, I'm gonna create another solid. So I'm gonna create a solid right on top of my background there. So I'm gonna again make it black. So we have another and I'm gonna rename it pattern so it's less confusing. Then double click and you should uh, see option for pattern overlay. And here you should have your pattern. Like when you go here in the option and you scroll down, that should be. So look at that sexy Shrek, it's still there. So <laughs> go ahead uh, and then you can adjust the size. For me, 125 works perfectly fine. And I'm gonna confirm it. Now I don't want this pattern everywhere. So for that, uh, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead, select this uh, mask option, get the brush tool with black color. And also I will make sure my hardness is like no more than like 20-ish percent. And then I will erase it from where I don't need it. And to bring something back, just change to white and you can bring it back to erase, you change to black. So you get the point. Now uh, it is a bit too strong. So I will change the opacity of this to something around 50%. Now we also need to blend in the model a little bit more. This bottom edge is a little too hard. So I'm gonna activate the layer mask again and the using same technique, but this time I will make the hardness zero and then I will just erase it from where I don't need it. While we're at it, let's also add the star background. 
So again, this star background will go under your pattern on top of your background. So make sure this background layer is active. Then you go to file and place embedded. And here you select your stars and place them and adjust them so they are behind her like this. Now again, I don't want the stars too much outside the circle. So I will apply a layer mask and I will erase it using black color. And so they are gone. Now still they're a bit too strong. So first let's reduce the opacity a little bit. So I will keep it at around like 70%. On top of that, I will create another adjustment layer and I will select levels and I'm gonna clip it so it will only affect the star layer. And then I can just move it a little bit to the right. So a lot of that hazy feeling, like the fogginess is gone. Confirm it. So all the basic setup is actually ready. I'm gonna recrop it a bit so composition looks nice. Composition is ready, now let's start coloring everything. So first of all, I'm gonna create a new solid right on top of my pattern. So everything underneath is covered. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a solid and for the color, this is the code and this is the only color code that we will use for entire tutorial. Now simply change the blend mode of this layer to color and everything in the background should be taken care of. Now let's focus on ring. So this is the ring and I'm gonna rename it so there is less confusion. Now we need to create glow effect for the ring, right? So for that, I'm gonna create a copy of it. So you just press Ctrl J so you will have a copy then you go to filter, blur, and you apply Gaussian blur. And you keep it somewhere around 50 pixels. So the pixels will depend on the resolution of your photo. So you just need to guess it, you know? So somewhere around 50 pixel is okay. Then hit okay. Now I'm gonna make a copy of this. So control J. And then we go to again, filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. But this time instead of 50, we go a little bit further. So like, let's say 75 pixel and hit okay. Then you make another copy. So control J, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And this time we make it even more. So like 125 pixels, hit OK. Another copy. You, you see the pattern now, right? So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And instead of 125, this time I'm going to make it 175. A little bit more even, why not? And then hit OK. I think this looks good enough. Now I want to group all the glows. Not the ring, but just the glow. So I'm gonna select the ring copy four, hold my shift key and click on the first ring copy though. All the glow layers are selected, then control G. So everything is in group and I'm gonna rename it to ring glow. Now I want to make this glow colorful. So again, create new adjustment layer, select a solid and I'm gonna use the same code again, hit okay. Now you don't even need to change any blending mode. Just right click here and select create clipping mask and it will automatically make your glow colorful. However, the problem is that now if also ring is blue and I don't want it, I want it to be white. So I'm gonna take this ring and I will put it on top of my uh, color layer. So now it's here. I think it this way it looks a bit more vibrant and bright. Now let's focus on the model. So I'm gonna activate the model layer First, I'm gonna create a new hue saturation layer, clip it so it just stays on model, and then I'm gonna make it black and white, like proper black and white. Look at this, see? Now I'm gonna create another layer, and this time I'm gonna select curves, and again, clip it so it's only on the model, and then I'm gonna make it dark, fairly dark, so that looks okay. And then I will change the opacity to 60, looks good. Now the thing is, I don't want the edges to be darker because I know the light will come there, right? So I'm gonna select the mask and using black color, I will just erase it slightly from the edges. So now it only makes the center portion darker, which is perfect. Then I'm gonna create another adjustment layer and create a solid. And again, using the same color, hit okay. Then I'm gonna right click and create a clipping mask. So it's only on the model. Then I will change the blend mode to color. So now we have this really nice blue color on the model. However, it's a bit strong. So to bring out some texture, I'm gonna double click. And in the layer style, I will hold my Alt key and I will drag the slider here. Let me move it to the side so you can see what's going on. So this is how it's normally, right? So you hold your Alt key and then you drag it to the side a bit. And then you drag this point. 
So if I check the preview, you can see that there's a slight difference, but uh, it is a bit important. So hit OK. Now let's create another solid. So go ahead, solid, and then same code, hit OK. And right click, create clipping mask. But this time I'm gonna change the blend mode of this to overlay. Now it's a bit too strong, so select your mask. And first of all, let's hide everything. So I'm gonna simply press Control I or Command I on Mac. So everything is hidden. Then using my brush tool, now we will use white color because we wanna bring it back. And then I will just paint on the edge where I want the glow. So as you can see, now we have really strong highlight on the edges of blue color. Then we will paint some glow manually. So create a new blank layer and rename it to manual paint. Don't worry, there's nothing crazy. Uh, so just uh, select this color, the same color. So you have brush with same color, right? And the hardness is 0%. Then simply just go ahead and paint it like this. Okay, that looks perfect. Then change the blend mode of this to soft light. And you should have this really nice glowing spots all over the image. Now I'm gonna make a copy of it. So press Ctrl J, then uh, right click and convert it to a smart object. Then change the blend mode of this to hard light. So it's like super strong, but change the opacity to 20%. Then what you do is you go to filter, blur, and then you select motion blur. Now for my uh, resolution, uh, 1000 pixel works perfectly fine. The angle should be 90 or whatever direction you want the glow to spin in. For me, it's minus 90 and like around 1000-ish pixel and then hit OK. So as you can see, now the glow, it kind of blends into entire photo. And that's the entire process for creating color and glow for the background. Now let's create those glowing eyes to finish the photo. For that, create a new blank layer and I'm gonna name it Eye Base. And then zoom in in your photo. And here, I'm gonna make my brush smaller. I need white color. And I want hardness to be around like 50 to 60%. Not too soft, not too hard. And then I will zoom in as much as I can and I will paint on the eye like this. So once you are done painting, it should look something like this. This is important so that we can make the glow visible. So the setup is ready. Now let's create another blank layer and zoom out so we can see the entire photo. Okay, sweet. Now I need to fill it with black colors. I can just do the basic way, the paint bucket tool, make it black and I can fill it with black color. You know where this is going. So now filter, uh, render and I will create a lens flare. So as you can see, it is try to make it in as center as possible and make sure it's not too bright, you know? So somewhere around like for me, 70 to 80% works perfectly fine. And then hit okay. Now I'm gonna go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. So blur it until the details are gone, but not so much that you, you know, it looks bad. So I think around 70-ish pixel looks Good. Now change the blend mode of this to screen. Then take your move tool and move this on top of the eye. Now we need to make it smaller. So control T and then make it small. And confirm it. So as you can see, now we have a very simple glow, but it's not visible. So I'm gonna go to image, adjustment, here saturation. And here I'm gonna select colorize. And then I will increase the saturation so the color itself is visible. And then you can change it to whatever shade you want. So for me, these are the numbers. I'm going for a classic teal and orange combination. And hit OK. Now we can just copy this. So Control J and put this on the next eye. So you have really nice glow. Now you can stop here or you can make it even more powerful. So before we do that, let's merge both of these layers because we are like happy with the positioning. So hold your control key, select both of them and press control E. So it will merge and then you will have to change the blend mode to screen again. So you have really nice glow. 
Now you can just make copy of it. So control J and it's more powerful. Another thing I can go to filter blur and apply a bit more Gaussian blur. So it spreads out. So now, as you can see, it has a bit more presence and then you can merge this too. So again, hold your control key, merge this. So control E and then change it to screen. So you have the glow on a single layer now. It's easy to manage. And for the changes, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and create now a hue saturation on top of it and clip it so it's only on the glow. And now you can change it to any color you want. So for me, the color is fine. I'm just gonna make it a bit more saturated, not much. And close it. Now to change the color, if you made it this far, you probably know how to do it. So select your manual paint because this is the last layer for the background stuff, right? Because then we start the eye uh, glow. So select the manual paint, create new hue saturation right on top of it. And that's it. Now when you change the hue, it will change color of everything underneath it. So we can go a bit more, you know, synth wave uh, kind of color and you already have color for your, sorry, the adjustment for your eye glow. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to something a bit different. So there, just within two seconds. So you can now have as many colors, lighting effects, whatever you want. So that's it, this is the final output. And this is how you create your own neon renaissance style poster. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content. So till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.